Oh. Okay, we are live, guys. Okay. Ladies. Call the meeting to order. Buster, will you bring us the order, please? Yes, sir. This meeting of the mayor and board of aldermen for the city of Cleveland is now in session. Anyone that has business before this board, up and you will be heard. Dad, would you open us with prayer? Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we come again to give thanks for the many blessings that have restored unto us. We thank you for the privilege and opportunity for allowing us to come together to discuss the business of the city. We pray that everything we do will be in your will. It is in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 I think we have a couple of visitors tonight. I'd like to welcome them. Our first visitor tonight will be uh, President Bill LaForge with his annual update. President LaForge, the floor is yours. Can you hear us, President? Yes, I'm here. Okay. All right. The floor is, is yours. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for the invitation. I'm pleased to share some updates with you, the mayor, and members of the board and city officials, including some statistics that you might find interesting. Uh, as you might recall, we opened school on August 17th. So far, we've had a good seven plus week start to the new academic year. <laughs> We're doing quite well, just operating at a quieter level than usual, as you would suspect. We will conclude the fall semester with exams and commencement just before Thanksgiving. That's a new schedule. And we will return in early January for the spring semester, which this year will not include a spring break and will end the last week in April. Uh, our current overall enrollment is just over 3,000 students. That's down about 300 or so due almost entirely to the pandemic but our graduate school enrollment is up and that's good news. Just uh, under 600 students live on campus in the resident halls. The rest of them commute. Many of them live around Cleveland in houses and apartments uh, or they're all online and they could live anywhere in the world. Our tuition currently is $7,951, very competitive. That includes a 6% increase this year. We have a total employment base of 630 individuals. 211 of those are faculty members and 419 are staff. Our budget for this year uh, hovers right around $62 million. That includes and represents a 2.6% reduction in state funding and an 8.6% net decrease in student tuition again due to enrollment decrease brought on by the pandemic. As you would suspect, we're trying to balance the need to advance our academic mission with the need to make the campus as safe as possible during the pandemic. So we're teaching many classes in what we call a blended fashion known as hybrid. That's part face-to-face -face classes and part online. Some of the courses are all face-to-face. -face. Others are completely online and most are a mix of the two approaches. About 62% of our course content delivery falls into the hybrid or face-to-face -face category. About 38% uh, are all online. We discovered that many students and faculty have concerns and anxiety about the COVID. So uh, you won't be surprised to hear that we've tried to accommodate that they physically don't want to be on campus because of the fear of contagion, uh, either for medical or any reason. So we've uh, allowed faculty to elect to teach online from home, and we've allowed students to take all their classes online as they choose. So far, 40 faculty members have chosen to do that, and 200 students have chosen to be all online. So as you can probably tell from riding around Cleveland, the campus climate and the level of activities and events are quite different from the normal year. We are maintaining, nevertheless, quite a, an active set of activities for our students as much as we can <clears throat> to try to give them a, a, as best possible experience uh, in these challenging times. But in doing so, we're subscribing to all of our safety protocols regarding masks 
and social distancing. For those of us who remember our college experience, uh, this is certainly different from what we and, and certainly our students today expected, but the COVID related safety accommodations are absolutely necessary and, and prudent. Most of our in-person events, including athletic competition in football and soccer have been canceled or postponed for this fall. We are engaging in golf, cross country and swim dive intercollegiate competition and our other sports teams are practicing. The BPAC, pretty well dark. Uh, performances are canceled for the fall except for a movie series. With respect to the COVID response itself, we have a really uh, tight system in place. We work very hard to make the campus as safe as possible to work and go to college. We actually have a COVID response coordinator who serves as our overseer and our clearinghouse of information and our enforcer. Uh, I have daily updates from her and on Monday mornings, all the eight state university executives and the commissioner meet to discuss our respective COVID response activities. So we're all staying pretty well in tune with what's going on. As you would also guess, we've spent hundreds and hundreds of hours in planning for dealing with this COVID situation and tens of thousands of dollars on things we never had heard about before, like PPE. <laughs> Uh, on technology and other resources to have a safe environment. And we have a, a bunch of protocols for our students and employees, uh, mask wearing, of course, which we are continuing despite the state's relaxation of that requirement. Social distancing is still in vogue, a lot of sanitization processes and practices. And we have daily screening for every student and person on campus for every building. And I invite you to check out our COVID response dashboard you can find that on our website at deltastate.edu. We update it every morning with key data. Uh, the current numbers of those students and employees that are testing positive are quite low in single digits. So we feel confident at this point that we're managing the pandemic pretty well, at least as well as could be expected. As I say, we have a lot of things going on despite the pandemic. A few examples for you. Just last week, the student life on campus hosted a voter registration drive day for our students. Our, our okra patch program in the Cleveland Public Schools has been requested to volunteer virtually to assist students and families in adjusting to learning online in a virtual format. And we have an off-campus work study program called Okra Works. Uh, we're partnering currently with 60 local employers, businesses around town, to provide student workers with jobs. It's a great partnership with our local businesses. That's a win-win for everybody. In a few other, other news items, uh, our Delta State Foundation has received significant gifts recently from Bank Plus, from the Bolivar Medical Foundation, from the Phil Harden Foundation, and from Billy, yours, and many of our old friend, Walter Wood, who, who has endowed a scholarship. Uh, in the area of alumni engagement, we launched a new Delta State Alumni Connect platform. That's a way for alumni to uh, be in touch with each other in a very easy, uh, helpful, and friendly way. To date, we have 720 alumni who uh, registered. Many probably already know that our $2 million food court renovation in the Union features some great attractions. The uh, Chick-fil-A is now a full menu, Chick-fil-A. We have a burrito bowl there, a firehouse sub shop, and of course the other popular Starbucks. Those are all open to the public. So we invite and welcome any Clevelander or anybody from the area to come in when they're open. Our cafeteria, however, for the time being is open only for students, faculty, and staff because of the pandemic. Sadly, we've had to cancel pig picking. Uh, but we will stage a full week of virtual homecoming activities and programming that'll occur the second week in November. And uh, everybody can help us join in uh, paying tribute to Dr. Stephen Clark, who will be honored as our alumnus of the year this year for Dell State. He and Commissioner Willie Simmons will be among the newest inductees in the Dell State Alumni Hall of Fame. 
A couple of other items of interest for you. The College of Business and Aviation has established a business assistance center. A grant from USDA is allowing them to provide some recovery assistance to small businesses and women-owned businesses in the Delta that are coping with the pandemic. So if you need any referrals for that, uh, please just have them get in touch with our College of Business, uh, Dean Billy Moore. Our Delta Music Institute has teamed up with the Cleveland Fire Department, as you all probably know, to film an educational video for Firemen's Week 2020. And the video is gonna be used in local elementary schools all around the Delta. So Cleveland will be shining uh, through that video. Our social work department has also created something new. It's a child advocacy center uh, in, in concert with the state advocacy centers. This new center will serve children and families in Bolivar and Sunflower counties. We are really proud that our commercial aviation program and our counselor education program have recently been reaccredited. That's really important, as you know, for university programs. And you'll have to take great pride in this, as do we. The passage rate for Delta State students for both the registered nurse licensure and nurse practitioner certification were 100% this past year. You just can't get any better than that. So we're providing a lot of nurses and nurse practitioners for the Delta and the outlying regions. <clears throat> Our race relations conference, Winning the Race, will resume next March. It will be virtual. The focus will be on student engagement. And we have some interesting offshoots of that privately funded program that include three new initiatives that provide support for black male students in the Mississippi Delta through high school and college and into careers. So it's an outreach to the community, community service. We've got a little thing going on to, to celebrate our Mississippi Delta Chinese heritage. There are new images and some uh, records that are now available online at our archives. And all you have to do again is go to our homepage and look for archives. And those who are curious about that part of the Delta and Cleveland's past can find some information there. One cool thing that our students I think will really like, we recently launched a program that offers 24 seven online tutoring to all graduate and undergraduate students on campus or anywhere. It's a free service that students have in addition to the already existing tutoring that's available for both face-to-face -face and virtual classes. Um, not much of an update regarding the golf course commercial development, except that we have a feasibility study that will commence soon. The IHL Board of Trustees has recently given the green light for that project to move forward. And to close out, I would say to show appreciation for the support, Mayor, and uh, all of those in the Cleveland community, our art department at Delta State has partnered with the chamber to display uh, the faculty's annual uh, art exhibits around town in the shop windows. And they're already up, and I think you all will enjoy seeing those all around the city. So it's a great collaboration, great partnership uh, to celebrate art and, and our businesses. Um, I had announced this before, and some of you have heard it, the fall edition of the Delta State Colloquia, our distinguished lecture series, will be a really great program featuring uh, NASA Deputy Administrator Jim Moorhard. Uh, we don't have the date nailed down. It'll be later this month, and we'll make that announcement and get the word to you later. And then the new president's home, as anybody who drives by can tell, is uh, almost complete. Uh, Roy Collins' company, Chris and company, have done a great job working on that house with a lot of collaboration. We hope to move in soon and we look forward to hosting the entire community at an open house when it's safe to do so. And as always, I would say to each of you, uh, Delta State values and appreciates very much its partnership and its collaboration with the city. We look forward to continuing that great relationship. Thanks again for inviting me today and I'd be pleased to respond to any questions or concerns you may have. Thank you, Thank Mayor. You. Thank you for the great report. Any questions of President LaFord? Mayor, uh, Robert Sanders, Mayor LaFord, can you hear me? I can, Robert. How are you tonight? I'm good, good. First of all, let me thank you for that vital report, and which is much needed. You bet. And I just want to thank and commend you and the staff for a job well done, especially not just during this pandemic, but in, in its entirety. They meet the needs of our students. But I heard you say something about in your earlier statement that the state has a, 
a reduction as full as funds. Am I saying that correctly? Say, say that again. I couldn't quite catch. I, I said the state has a reduction that was. Yes. That was yeah, we had a 2.6% reduction in our state appropriation this year. Uh, we were expecting a bigger one. So I guess we were at least a little happy to get just 2.6. Uh, that, that's significant for us. Uh, we were hoping for level funding and we didn't get it. I hope that the state's revenues this year will continue to show as they are and we'll get a little bit more next spring uh, because we really need that to run our show here. And then Absolutely. on top of that, with COVID, we had a reduction in enrollment. Our two biggest sources of revenue, as you know, are state appropriation support and tuition revenue. And we had a big cut in one, and a medium cut in the other. It's tough to run business when you do that, but we knew it was coming, we planned for it, and our budget is in a very solid position. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you, great, great report, and thanks for all you do, President Ford. Our, our feelings are the same. We, Delta State and Cleveland are one and the same. So thank you and uh, good luck to you this year. We'll move on. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you have a great meeting. Thank you. All. Thank you. Okay. Our next visitor is Mr. Don Williams. And Don, I see you're on. If you will, you've got the floor. Um, good evening, gentlemen. Good I, evening. Uh, I was contacted by the clerk and she asked me what I want to want to talk to the board i just wanted to make sure you all did you all uh review the letter that i did mail in i have any questions about it right jamie do you want to respond to the uh yeah dog yes we got the letter i think it was three weeks ago now um my acos did go straight out to the property and they are aware of the owner we have not had dealings with that specific shepherd but we do have two other shepherds he's owned in the past that we are aware have been issues before uh, we, they did leave a warning notice asking him to, you know, utilize the pen and the fence. However, and I did look over our ordinance, unless we find him at large twice or, um, sorry, my asthma's messing up today, or he unfortunately does injure an animal or a person, we can't force him to have the kind of concrete bottom with the top. Tethering is allowed by our ordinance. But, and we did encourage the neighbors, they spoke, the ACO spoke to the neighbors and told them if they see the dog at large to please contact the shelter and they would go straight out and pick him up. Because once we picked him up, then we have, you know, some reason to enforce the ordinance a little stronger with him. But unless the dog's picked up at large or unfortunately does injure somebody, the ordinance, you know, allows tethering of a dog even as long as they don't have access to the public right of way. But they have gone out at least twice to the specific property and they are um, trying to, um, sorry, drive through that area more uh, to make sure that they can catch him at large. And we also did tell the neighbors if they see him running loose to take some pictures because they have not been able to catch him at large. But if we do see him at large and have photo evidence, that gives us some reasoning to enforce strict, stricter housing for that dog. Oh, he and does. I do understand your concerns completely. So he doesn't have to be in the fence? As long as he's in a, on a tether and contained and does not have access to the public right of way, the only animals that have to have specific housing requirements are pit bulls or dogs that have been deemed dangerous or potentially dangerous. But if we pick him up at least, if we pick him up at least twice running loose, we can then deem him to be potentially dangerous and he'd be required to have specific housing that would make sure he's not, he can't be tethered at that point. Well, I'll tell you what, he puts a fear factor in, uh, in myself uh, and my wife and I, and uh, he's, he's, he's made us change our way of living here, which is, uh, shouldn't. That's, that's by it. And I Is understand. He in the front yard? Does he leave his front yard, Don? He, he, he yes. Is. If I may, Mayor, I've talked sure. to. Number, I've talked to a number of the neighbors, and the dog is constantly loose uh, in, in other people's yards at times. Uh, quite a few of the residents have changed their habits, their walking habits in the afternoon. They don't want to feel safe walking in the area. And a lot of people don't even let their children go out in the yard. To it is a, a major problem. Yeah, Jamie, we need to uh, be vigilant and get him out. To I mean, he's obviously out, so we need to 
we we've asked the neighbor specifically to call the shelter especially if you know between eight and five you know if it's after hours we've told them they can call the police department and they'll they should be dispatched but if it's between eight and five we've asked them to call the shelter directly but we've not gotten any calls because we track our calls through our system and we haven't got any calls about that shepherd being out and if we cut if we find a dog out we're going to bring him back to the shelter when that shepherd gets out it's going to be too late unfortunately the, we can't just I say that yeah, is, we, I, go ahead, if you go by I, I just go ahead and put up with it and do what i'm going to do but the 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 chain that's holding it it's just a matter of time if you walk by high is knotted up and you know he kind of jerks and pulls so it's going to give i've had you know, some of us, you guys probably have too. You all know it's just a matter of time before that chain breaks or gives in. It's, he, he knots it up, it links all up, and it's going to come loose. And I just know it's, I hope it doesn't happen. But Mayor, uh, uh, I think yeah. we need to take a look at our ordinance of maybe that uh, you can't tether a dog in the front yard where people are working, walking on city property, and, you know, in city right of ways. Uh, I agree. Let's uh, maybe we need to get Danny to take a look at the ordinance and let's you're going to tether the dog. It has to be tethered in your backyard, not out front where it harasses anybody going down the street. There's a dog on my street that's a similar breed that acts the same way and he gets tethered in his front yard. And as our ordinance is written, there's nothing we can do about that situation. But I think that would be great to have Danny, a dog tethered in the backyard specifically. Danny, you got some Griffith. That, that's a good point. You're interfering with the public right of way. You're making people change their lives. Um, Jamie and I will get you something. Okay. Um, the, the way his house sits, Mr. Mayor, his, uh, the, this house sits on a corner. Okay. So it, it, it's, you know, whichever way you want to go, it's, it's, it's facing Evergreen or um, North Street. So It's 1100 North Street. Is that correct? I, I, you may be correct there, but you know, so. it's on the corner. So whichever way you go, it, he, he's got you covered. Right. Mr. Williams, backyard fenced in? No, sir. Okay. Mr. Mr. Williams, I'll ride by on the way in tomorrow to work and, and so I know what to deal with and then I'll, I can talk with Jamie on it. We're already you, walk, you, want, you could park in my yard and walk that way. I challenge you to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't no, you do that. My running shoes. <laughs> well, no, run. No, my, older, my, 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 my ACOs did speak to several neighbors and they, they said the same thing that Alderman Smith said and that Mr. Williams has said that the dog has gotten out before. We, we, and like we, I, fixed I, said, ACOs, about that. we would be very glad to pick him up. Believe me, we would like to have a nice good conversation with him uh, because this would be the third dog that we've dealt with of his. One, he we came in as a stray and he said later that we just rehomed it. He didn't claim it until after we got rid of it. And the second one, he got rid of on his own. So we're very familiar with him and this the situation that, that it is. So we would love to pick the dog up. So well, we let's do we something leave with the neighbors later. to call us. Yeah. So we would love to pick him up. So I don't want anybody to get hurt. Right. Uh, you're right. Uh, well, so we, we encourage you to take those photos if you can. Get those photos. That, that, that proves a lot of things. So. Okay. Uh, and you had another issue, Don. Did you? The other issue, yeah. I just, just want to remind you, I know I, you know, I heard some rumor about the school was going to be built in the on the property behind the medical mall. I just want you to know that I still probably oppose that more than I hadn't changed my position on that. Okay, Don, is it a mall race? Is it a school or is it office buildings? It's a combination of both. Okay, uh, it's, it's, but it's head. it's not going anywhere right now, is it? I, is anything? I think in they are in the process of now uh, obtaining their loan. They should be breaking ground. Anytime. Wow. Okay. Well, it's official that they're going to build a school back there. Uh, they have a. Uh, last time I talked to uh, Ms. Littleton, they had been funded by the federal government, and they were getting the necessary paperwork in place. I know they had uh, did some soil testing. So yes, they're moving forward. Okay, Kurt. All right, we. I, just so the, we'll be consistent, I think the attorney needs to look at the last uh, minutes and the option we granted, because I think it requires a public hearing before any final uh, action is taken. But I'll defer to the attorney to come back and report that to us. And I think uh, to have a public hearing, you'd have to have notice to that area, many of whom we all know and have 
spoken about it. But again, to be fair, I think we follow what the the minutes have said in the past and the options we've granted, which I believe uh, my recollection is, I, I'll defer to the attorney, that it requires notice to the public and a hearing uh, from people that live and have their homesteads there. Danny, will you look into that then? Yes, sir. Mayor, if, yes. you, if I may speak, you remember we sure. did have the public hearing and I was asked by the board to solicit every person that lived that's adjacent to that property. And I did do that and I reported back to the board before the hearing that uh, there were two people, Mr. Williams was one, that opposed, but the other was fine with it. And we did have the public hearing already. Okay. I, I guess we're going back a couple of years. I, 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 I'd I like the attorney to go back and look at the minutes and yeah, I guess whatever. We we to where was the public hearing? Was that City Hall? I, I think we all need to be refreshed on that. Yeah, yeah, we just. I do. Uh, the beauty of sitting here doing this in the office is I'm sending Maurice and Kenneth an email right now and can get the history and, and report back. Because you, you wasn't even on board at the time, I, I don't believe. So, we'll okay. Find out. All right. Okay, Mr. Williams, anything else, sir? Um, so, so, I guess you, you'll let me know about this um, the school and the office buildings where we yeah. stand on that. Yes, sir. Yeah. I, just, I, I hate to look out there tomorrow and see them pouring concrete. I know I saw them. I don't think, Kenneth, has anybody come? Kenneth, nothing has been done. Oh, no, they've applied. Uh, they brought in preliminary drawings, but the contractor has not submitted anything for an actual permit as of yet. Okay. All right. Well, I, I wouldn't even aware of that. So, okay. Okay. That's all, Mayor. Okay. Thank you, Don. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All. Uh, public hearings. Danny. Oh, let me get out of my email. I'm sorry. Um, Take me a minute. Hold on. Okay. Where did we go? Give me screens open. Here we go. And it's a three page list, but most of these have been dealt with. Xed out everything. I'm sorry. Let's see. Here we are. 112 South Davis, Bossy Johnson. 12, no, 1326 Highway 8 West, Joel Trust. 1200 North Yale, Richard Frost Fleming, 506 White Street, Ernest Webb, 409 Industrial Parkway, Glen Doyle, 907 South Davis Hill, Inc., also known as Western Motel, uh, 1014 Parkway Drive, John Stewart, uh, 1602 South Christman, Levi Boone the uh, third. Address on Alo Street, 33-28-260, Smith, Ernest, et al., uh, 614 Hadley, uh, Jimmy McKnight, 601 Clark, Tyrone Lewis, 622 Pearl Street, Moselle, Bosch, Blockett, 1006 Johnson, King, Ruth and May, 217 North 3rd Avenue, David and Linda Bailey, uh, 304 South 2nd, David and Linda Bailey. 115 North Victoria, David and Linda Bailey. 108, 110 North Victoria, da David and Linda Bailey. Uh, 603 South of Florida, Jimmy Jordan. 201 Grover, Jordan Rental Properties, LLC. 371 South Bow, Marigold Baptist Church. Uh, 505 North Bow, Margaret L. Williams, 
311 Carpenter, Acme Investment Company. Those are the ones with no progress or some progress and are ready for adjudication. Is that it? Yes, sir. Paul made the motion. Second. Oh, gosh, I'm just guessing. Ted, second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Both, okay. If we will. Well, we got Kitty here. I want to bring up one thing, Mayor. Okay. Uh, I don't know what that street is, but it's on the, uh, the south side that goes from Highway 61, cutting back uh, at the end of the Bowel Supermarket Complex there. Right. The strip mall. All of their garbage is blowing out from behind it, and there's some vacant lots right across the street on the south end. Right. And if you ride through there, it's full of garbage. And it's at all times. It's, it's uh, you know, we they got to do something about their garbage containers or get them closed or they're overfilling them. But Kenneth, do you know where we're talking just, about? It's horrible. I'll get somebody yeah. by. If you'll get there in the morning. First thing in the morning. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, I got another one there, Mayor. Okay. That, that strip of property on the south part of the animal shelter, there's somebody privately owns that, but they never keep the cut. The south side of it. It's the south uh, side of the gate as you enter uh, the animal shelter. We maintain the fence. In yeah, a, inside a the fence, strip. Side, right. No, it's oh. on the outside of the fence. It's right. privately owned, but we uh, they never keep it cut. Kenneth, do you know where we're referring to there? I do, and I'll take a look at that and see where we okay. are. First thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, uh, I guess we'll go to engineering now. All right, Stop. guys, I'm gonna hit all the high points we have uh, and then get all this approved at once, if that's all right. Sure. Up our Highway 8 and 61 lighting project, we have a pay request. We are 69% complete with the job, hope to finish up by the end of the year. Uh, our Fayette Davis stormwater lift station project, we have a pay request for it tonight. They are finished pouring the wet well and the pumps will be installed at the end of the month. Once they hook up the new pumps, then they'll work on decommissioning the old pumps and take them offline. Uh, our fire station project, we have a pay request for approval. They're approximately 85% complete, working on finishings. Uh, our water meter replacement, we have a meters and installation contract pay request for approval. We're about 50% complete. And our park improvement projects, we have pay requests for the Fireman's Park Bathroom project, which is completed. Park Bollard projects completed, final pay request. And then Bear Pen Tennis Courts Lighting, final pay request tonight. And the only other updates, Fiducia Park, um, we're actively working on the bathroom concession stands and Joe Reed is moving back in to finish the road this week. He only probably has a week or two of cleaning up and finishing the road work. And then our North Street drainage and Rosemary Road improvement projects are both uh, under design. And that's all I have. Okay, do we have a motion for these motion. payments? Paul made the motion, Ted second. All in favor say aye. 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 Josh, it's a great sense of pride to have so much uh, grant money at work and matching fund money and all the different things we got going. I think we're at an all time high Cleveland, Mississippi for the work that's being done. And a lot of it is, is on your shoulders and we appreciate you so much. Yes, sir, appreciate that. Thanks. Okay, Danny. Yes, sir, your consent agenda is before you for approval. So moved. I have I'll a question there. Okay, Maurice. Uh, on that professional contract for the $40,000, what are they gonna be doing that the chamber's not doing? Well, but the retail strategies, retail strategy the chamber doesn't do any of that. They've never, I mean, they don't go solicit, you know, mom and pop businesses or restaurants or, or whatever. Tractor supplies and stuff like that. Yeah. Tractor supplies. <laughs> okay. It, it, it's, it's just two different issues. In fact, the chamber is going under some d different areas now, they, they're going to get more into economic development and all, which will, will be a big help. But th that would be the difference. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. 
All right, we have a motion from Paul. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, uh, Danny, second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, continue on, Danny. Yes, sir. Let me direct you to take a look at it. It's in your Dropbox. Uh, the detailed memos in there that will be from Katie Port <laughs> and Jax. Uh, Katie goes into quite a bit of detail on some things with the planning commission. Um, that sort of inf that's the information that you've been requesting. Look at that and give us some feedback and let you let us know what more you would like. Um, I've got an attorney memo there for you. It cites two items here in open session for you to approve. Uh, they show up on your agenda as uh, approval of the resolution for hiring bond council professionals and approval of the F fiscal year 2021 bond resolution of intent. intent. I believe that needs se separate motions and second approving those. Okay, somebody make the motion. Make the motion. Uh, okay, Kirk made a motion, Ted second uh, for the first. And all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, Approval of the resolution of intent. So moved. Paul made that motion. Danny second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Okay, Danny. Um, Mr. Mayor, everything else I have will keep for executive session, but we do have an executive session that will require some detail. Okay. Okay, uh, Kenneth, if you will do planning commission and community development. Okay, what we have here, uh, we have a recommendation from the planning commission to appoint uh, Danny Griffin, David Dave. Griffin, to the uh, planning commission uh, as a uh, member with his uh, impeccable record. I think he would be a uh, uh, shoe in as a member, a uh, great choice for the city of Cleveland and for the planning commission. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, I got to, Danny made the motion. Uh, Maurice, second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Community development, Kenny. And our monthly report, I, I've submitted several reports uh, on our monthly report on the building permits, the planning commission, the heritage commission. And if, want, and if anyone has any questions of me, I'd be glad to entertain their questions. I want to personally thank you for the, the way we, we're going into the winter. We need to catch all these grass situations that we can. And I think me and you have several conversations a day about it. So, mm -hmm. and, and the ones that y'all have taken your uh, Alderman's ride, to Kenneth, I appreciate and whoever has not, please take time to do that so you can look at your own wards and uh, bring any attention to Kenneth that you need. Hey, I got one question for Kenneth. Okay. Uh, Kenneth, those apartments uh, down there on uh, as Cross and Pearl. Oh, Cross and Pearl. You, are you familiar with those? Uh, not exactly, but go ahead. Okay, let, let's first of all, me and I said, with them, so we'll know which ones I'm talking about. They, there are two sets of apartments, one on, there's one on Pearl, then if you if you come to take a left on Crawl, there's, there's some right there on that side. And I want to say they are, what's the guy named? Uh, but anyway, he owns those apartments. And, and are they those, duplexes or apartments, Robert? I'm trying to picture it as well. They're apartments. They're apartments. They're not duplexes. And, uh, They've been there for quite a while. And the guy that owns them has had them for quite a while. You know, so all of us should be familiar. I just can't call a guy's name. But to make a long story short, man, we gotta do something with these property owners who own these places because it's terrorizing our city. And it and it's sad. And you know, there's no accountability for those people that own that property. As long as they're getting rent, it's okay, but they they're not up the, the upkeep is not being done. Okay, we'll take a look at it. And, and, and it's an our city, so I'm just saying, and that white house is on the corner right across from Brunson Film Home. Now, I don't know who owns that house. I don't know if it's uh, Ken Thomas who, but that house is, is a public nuisance. Yeah, we have that. We, we've uh, talked about that during the ride on that particular house, so we do have that yeah. one on our radar. Okay. So okay. these, these right. are just... These are just some areas we just want to look at it because it's, it's, it's taken away from my beautification. I showed him on that ride too. I yeah. him right now. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Man. All right. Thank you. Uh, Lisa. 
Can you hear Mellow? me? Yes. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, first of all, the caboose grant is completely finished now. The final report's been submitted. Uh, and as of today, the museum started admitting visitors, but without a lot of fanfare just yet. Uh, no big announcement just yet. And not until next week will I have uh, model train operators, but people can visit even without that. Uh, I did not opt to try to make people uh, make an appointment or come in because I think that makes it more difficult especially people walking down from the cotton house or just walk around downtown. We'll try to limit the number of people coming in with, with a, a reasonable way. But uh, the next week I will have model train operators. We'll go to that three day schedule, but the, the following week I do have vacation schedule. So really it'll be the end of October that last week where we have all the kinks worked out and have all the guys or most of them back and we'll build from there. Um, Nobody has to have an appointment except for groups. And that's the way we've always done it. Uh, so we just kind of go back to what we've always done, except it'll be just on a little bit of a, a modified schedule. And uh, you can look for uh, some announcements on social media and also a newspaper article. We have some things to talk about in the paper about the caboose and about reopening and about all of the new things in the museum. So that's where we stand. Bye. Thank you. Question. We appreciate it, Lisa. Appreciate your efforts. You know it is. Okay, Buster. Yes, sir. Y'all have my report, and unless you have, unless you have any questions, I only have two other things uh, to uh, report to y'all tonight. Questions of Buster. Okay. And you know, last in the last meeting, we talked about having an investigative report. And those cases and things to be presented, and how many criminal cases we have going on to the DA's office. Okay. I can't give out the investigative reports to these cases in a public forum, but I can give you a, a listing of the type cases that we are working on, if that's what you want. No, we just want the number of the cases. Okay. I can get that to you. That yeah, won't be. No, we, don't want, we don't want it in detail. No. Okay. And also uh, down in that courtroom, too, I just want to know have, I know they're doing this friend at the courthouse. Uh, are they doing any in, in, inside work there to curtail some of that mold? They're letting some mold on that wall. We're working on that now. I've contacted Ms. Green about it. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're having to wait for the new budget to come in to take a look at some of that stuff. And I've okay. already had somebody come down, had Josh come down and take a look at it. So okay. we're going we're gonna to be working on that during this budget session. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Hey, Mary, I got one thing that's really oh. not the Chiefs, but it's, it comes up. Do you, you remember the Quonset Hut building we looked at possibly buying when we were looking at the farm, with the farm credit building down there? Yeah, yes, sir, I do. That tennis and them, that place is gone. It's it's it needs to be torn down. It looks like hell right there next to that core building. And uh I just like Kenneth and take a look at it and see. Kenneth, it, you get that? Is Kenneth there? I don't know if he's even uh, there. I'll, I'll shoot him a note. I drive okay. by every day. Two prettiest magnolia trees anywhere in the county. And yeah, the whole oh, lot. Yeah, the building. Building's just coming. It, they're just letting everything grow all over it. And then right. it yes, okay. I got that. Okay, good. I hear you, Ken. Okay, Buster. What, what? The other, the only other two things is uh, I need approval for the unmarked vehicles to be spread across the board minutes so we can keep using them vehicles. Paul so, made a motion. Danny second. All in favor, say aye. Okay. <laughs> Uh, the only other thing that I have is just uh, to report to y'all that we just went through accreditation again, and I'm happy to say that we've been accredited for four more years. Congratulations. Congratulations. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Uh, how okay. many municipalities are accredited out of the, in the police department, do you think, Chief? Uh, as far as municipalities, there's 20, there was 25. <laughs> Two have recently dropped out. We've got 23 municipalities, uh, two uh, state higher education institutions, and I believe three sheriff's departments. Out of the entire state? Out of the entire state, yes, sir. And we wanted 23? Yeah. Yes, sir. Wow. There's 200, 
There's 252 total police department, registered police departments in the state. That is great. That's great. We, they're fixing to start back on the retirement community situation we worked on years ago, if you recall. And, and a, a lot of it stems behind the safety and all. So I, I think that sounds great for us in that court. Um, I hope that's picked up by the newspaper if they're watching and listening. Yeah. Uh, before I let Greg talk, he's been on, well, he, he had his sickness and, and he was down, but he's been on cloud nine and he's put Cleveland on the map uh, in a big way. So <laughs> Greg, we're proud of you. We're glad you're back well and, and, and you've got the floor. I appreciate it, Mayor. Uh, I guess I'll go ahead and start off with that news. It is huge news. We just finished our, uh, our rating uh, analysis from the Mississippi State Rating Bureau. We do this every four to five years. Um, after the points and all were turned in from the many efforts that have been provided by not only you, the city board, but from the, uh, also the firemen for all of the training, the extra things that they do. Uh, Keith Christopher's got a lot to do with that, the water supply. Code enforcement has a lot to do with that as well. Uh, the enforcement of our fire codes, sprinkler systems, things like that. Uh, I'm happy to, to say that we have increased from a class four rating to a class three. So uh, Outstanding. I am really, really on cloud nine. To give you a little bit of a comparison, uh, Gulfport, Mississippi has recently moved to a class two and they have one fire department uh, down the road from them in Biloxi that is working on moving to a class two but the rest of the fire departments in the state of Mississippi with multi-million dollar budgets, such as Jackson, Oxford, many places like that, or where we are is at a class three. So we're right there in line with some of your, your larger fire departments that I am extremely proud, not only of the guys and uh, for what we're doing, but the men and uh, their wives and families that have come before us that have made this possible. So it's, it's been a great, great month. So. Thank you for uh, the citizens of Cleveland, the support, and thank you for the board for getting us where we are. And uh, I hope we continue that healthy cycle of the firemen pouring into it, the city pouring into the support, and obviously uh, couldn't do it without the board pouring into uh, the fire department as well. So it's a great win-win situation for everybody. Everyone's efforts have been recognized. Yeah, uh, great. Thanks. Great. Yes, sir. Great. Please pass on to the department. Okay. Thank you. That, okay, Greg. Thank you. Jamie. Good evening. I'm going to try to get through this without coughing. It's just asthma though. I promise. Okay. <laughs> um, our total numbers for the, for the month ended up being 87 intakes, which is pretty on par with our September's in the last, you know, five years trending. We did end up sending 82 to rescue. So it's kind of a wash. Uh, that left my um, employees on the road a lot this past month. Dominique can attest to that with our travel authorization requests. So that's the good news. We did have an employee, unfortunately, lose their, their house, and it was a total loss. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, one of my full-time employees lost her house in a house fire. And so she's been out the past couple of weeks. You know, we've been doing what we can for her, and we've been trying to, to fill her spot. Hopefully, she's coming back tomorrow, and we're very excited about that. But, you know, other than that, it's been it's been pretty business as usual. We've had a transport about every once a week. Um, I've been up there weekends getting paperwork together because it's a lot. It's a lot of paperwork involved in those transports. We have had some new rescues reaching out to us just through word of mouth about, you know, how healthy and well and how transparent we are with our transports. So we have rescues reaching out wanting to pull animals from us. So and that's how we keep uh, keep the animals moving out and the new ones moving in to have space for them. Thank you. Questions of Jamie? Greg, did I let you, did you get through? Did you have anything else? Uh, the only other thing I had was fire prevention. And uh, <coughs> the reason I want to bring that up is because President LaForge brought that up as well. And just a thank you to DMI at Delta State. I am not able to go to the schools this year, which that's a 30 something year old program with fire prevention. And we go into the schools and I felt it very important that the children got to see the local fire marshal as well as the local firemen that would be coming to their home so we actually filmed the um uh, we've done it twice we've done it i've done it once at the library for story hour that's already debuted and been uh done with community helpers week and uh we've got about a 40 minute program that we're going to be live streaming uh for all the teachers between k4 through uh second grade 
and we'll give out all the red hats and all that stuff. The only difference will be they will be seeing it virtually, but it will be us. It will be current, and uh, we're excited about that. And thank you to DMI and Delta State for uh, filming all that for us and putting it together. Great. And uh, that's it. Okay, thank you. I had one more thing. Sure. Um, I needed to get, I wanted to ask permission. Uh, a friend of mine who's also a grant writer has volunteered some time to write some grants for us. She found one that's a very small window and it's for COVID-19 emergency relief. It's specifically for operations and, you know, excesses and pricing such as our cleaning supplies that have gone up so much. And she's willing to donate her time and write a grant for us. And no money, there's no money match. It's just free money if we could qualify. So I just wanted to get permission to apply for that grant. It's through the ASPCA. Please, please do all you can. <laughs> I didn't think y'all would mind, but I thought no, you told me to ask. That, never. Keith, you look too comfortable, but go ahead. And <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mayor, I'm going to be really brief. There's one thing on my report, which is very thorough, but there's one thing that I need everybody to be sure and see. Uh, as a result of these new meters going in the ground, uh, our unaccounted for water has plummeted. You know, it hadn't been but just six, seven months ago, we were we were losing 50% of what we pumped. Now we're down to 18%, which is phenomenal. And to put it in a nutshell, we're getting closer and closer by the week to getting paid for every gallon that we pump. We're not... We're not losing any money, whether it's bad meters or whatever. It's, it's It should be phenomenal difference here in another two or three months, for sure. And 18% is pretty much unheard of. I mean, AWA says that 20% is excellent, and we're, we're sitting at 18% for September. So that's good. I'm pretty excited about that. And that's all I've got. I've got one other thing I want to say. Uh, tonight, it's special to me. Uh, 30 years ago tonight, Jerome Norwood introduced me to the city of Cleveland as the project manager. Paul and Ted are the only two that's left in that room tonight that were there, but uh, that was a special night, and tonight's a special night for me, too, because this, this town has really accepted me and put their trust in me, and I'm halfway to my goal. I got my family raised. And I told the board that night I was going to raise my family here and I was going to retire here. But I'm nowhere close to retiring, but I'm halfway. Let's give a round of applause here, y'all. Thank you, Keith. Hey, Keith, Ted and I are the only two that are still alive. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you, Keith. Ted and I are the only two that are still alive. (laughs) We've seen a lot come and go, Paul. (laughs) <laughs> okay uh, Ray Bell mm, good evening uh, y'all have my report uh, I just needed to uh, discuss about the uh, uh, added lighting for the walking trail down on the north shop at the crossover uh, last last uh, month we had a situation down there with a family that was walking a car came on the crossover and almost hit the family and uh, Mr. Abraham called me to come down and reassess what was going on. We trimmed the trees back to get all the lighting we could get from the street light poles. And then we uh, turned the signs and put flashing lights on those, but it's still kind of dark in that area. And we looked at it and I called Robinson Electric in because they the one installed the system. And we have room enough, uh, we could put another light on each side of the walking trail right there at that crossover and still had a same layout, but it's going to cost about $10,284 in order to uh, install the two lights because all the boring they're going to have to do. They really should have done that uh, on the onset, Mr. Bell, and it, uh, board, it really would make a big difference. Yeah, we, safety comes first. So. It does. I, I make If we need a motion, I'd make a motion. We, we go ahead with it. If well, we need a- Dominic, do we have somewhere to uh, go on this? Mayor, I would think that we could look somewhere and if we, you know, sure. 10000 if we have to borrow it and then put it in. Right, okay. Danny, you got a motion on the floor? Motion. Motion by Danny. Second. Second, Paul, all in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, let's get it done. Thank you. Okay, thank you. That's all I have unless y'all have something for me. Okay, questions to Ray Bell? 
Okay, Clint. Clint. Good evening, Mayor. Uh, Good evening. Uh, two things tonight, and that's just approval of two invoices for Barge uh, Wagner. Uh, one's for the North Ramp expansion project, and the other one's for the airfield pavement rehab project. Okay. Do we have a motion for those two payments? I'll make a motion. Kirk made a motion. Maurice second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Questions of Clint? Okay. Jason? All right. Good evening. Good evening. Um, so outside of my report, uh, I do have a few things to discuss. Um, I did send Dominique some pictures of where some of the Frisbee golf, some of the Frisbee golf course holes should be. Uh, I'm not sure if that's been sent out to everybody or not. Uh, that would be where the bike trail is that we discussed last month. Um, so like I said last month, that is going to be privately funded. Um, so just your thoughts on that. What about keep of it? What was the question, Paul? What about the up the continuing upkeep of it? I mean, lots of times we get things that are donated to us and they cost us to maintain them for the rest of our life. Yeah, these would be kind of like what you see at Bear Pen Park. Uh, those were put out there, from my understanding, about 10 or 15 years ago. And, they and they're still going strong right now. Yeah, so they're it is, ma it's metal poles. It's just pretty much sitting down there. Uh, really no maintenance to them. It's just cutting around it, maybe weed eating around the pole. But besides that, really no maintenance. Okay. We, you, don't, you don't have it, the money not been yeah. Correct, we would not start the project until we got the money completely funded and we would all do it at one time. So it would not be something where we do it in pieces. Okay. Like I said last time, in order to have tournaments or anything like that, most of the time you have to have two courses. Right now we have one at Bear Pen. So if we get one here, we can start submitting for some tournaments here. <laughs> and you, you and Josh will kind of oversee the work and all. Yes, I would uh, I would get with Josh. Uh, I would get with Max Davidson. He's the one who came to me and going to help uh, fund this. And I will get with Max and we can all get together and sit down and come up with a plan with that. Okay. And you say it doesn't many, interfere with the walk and the ride. It's going to be what an 18 ball? hole course. It's an 18 hole course. Okay. Yes. Okay. Questions or motion? I don't have any problem with it. I, I don't either. I'll make a motion then to approve it. Paul made the motion. Danny second. All in favor say aye. 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 You know, okay. Thank you and good luck. Okay. Thank you. Uh, you sound a lot, Kirk. <laughs> uh, next thing is discussion on winter basketball league. I would actually like to try to have a basketball league this year, uh, starting sometime around November 10th, uh, start signups this week. Uh, and kind of what I want to do is just use two courts the courts that are catacornered to each other. Uh, we're not going to put any bleachers in there so people could bring their own chairs and social distance in the gym. Um, we would spread the season out from November, December, and January. That way we can spread it out and have all the games played. Uh, we would require all the fans to wear masks uh, and encourage fans who only show up for their game and after their game's over, uh, leave as well. And we would utilize the back entrance and the front entrance as well. So that's something that I would like to do. Use two of the four courts. Use two of the four courts. That way we can social distance in there. Yeah, you thought it out real well, it sounds like. What age are you targeting, Jason? Uh, it's going to be ages uh, 6 through 12. So it'll be ages uh, 'm sorry seven through twelve a seven eight nine year old league and then a 10 11 and 12 year old league can, can y'all hear it? yeah it's a lot of background somebody I yeah, it's a lot of background in there okay uh, Jason, those those participants will they be required to bring uh, you something indicating that they've been tested I mean uh, for for that uh, particular virus uh -huh. that they can make sure that they are not all interacting and somebody may have it. 
Um, I don't know how we would do that, honestly. You know, like I said, we're playing ball outside right now. We're not doing that with softball or baseball. Uh, I, I'm not sure how we would actually do that and control that. Yeah. It's more interaction going with basketball because you're so gathered up there. That's that's my point. Like I said, uh, I'm not sh- – I think uh, – Dominique may can answer this, but I think uh, minimizing the crowd, it – it should. I think we can fill the gym up to what, Dominic? Either fifty or seventy-five percent of capacity. Mm-hmm. I think the capacity of that gym is somewhere around two thousand people. And only having two courts going at a time would definitely not have that many people in there. Right, because the governor's new executive order did increase capacity for indoor arenas. I don't think it's any more than seventy-five percent, but. I thought it was fifty, but whatever. Is it fifty, yeah. Well, the the front court would go but use the front door. The back court would use the back door. That, and only using two cores that would cut it at 50%. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, these are the same children that are in school right now, too. So, it's, yeah, uh, correct. Okay. I, I like the idea of giving them something to do. I yeah. Like really. Well, that's true. Yeah. Okay. Um, see, uh, if you want to watch a lot of fun, you go to these, this gym and watch these kids play basketball. <laughs> but it is fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm in total agreement. So I just wanted to make sure okay. you know we were. I, I have no problem. Let's see and see what kind of response you get. Yeah. You know, you may have a lot of parents that say no, but I mean, it's. You know, I did kids. put a poll on Facebook and just put it on Facebook for a little bit, and I did have a lot of good responses from that. Okay, people are ready to get out next side. Yeah, we'll have to have some sort of release. I think that says you know we can't do anything about it if somebody catches it. But, Right. Uh, we can uh, we can actually have that. We did that this summer uh, for baseball, and we can actually have everybody sign that as well. We'll That's need a good it. idea. Okay. Okay. Uh, do we need to vote on that, Dominic? I, I don't think so. We, we I don't just accept that. doing it. No. Okay. All right. What okay. else, Jason? Uh, last thing is discussion on the Bear Pen Park uh, gate quotes. Oh, yeah. So I've gotten two quotes so far. Uh, Pretty much is only $130 difference in the quotes. Uh, like I said, I can get with Josh and let him look at these, and he can probably tell me which one would probably be the best because it's two different kinds. One is a double gate where it kind of opens up like this and kind of opens here, and then one of them is one where it slides open. Uh, so, like I said, it's only $130 difference in the price. I may get with Josh and kind of see what he thinks about that. that so, um Josh and Jason, I, I, the sliding gates make a little more sense to me. I, I've always, the gates that come out, I can just visualize somebody's car getting hit, yeah. and then they're going to want the city to well, fix the car. Sliding gates a lot more maintenance. Oh, do they? Okay. Well, just from my experience with them, just because they're the chain operated, right. Chain right. Running, where the right. other ones are usually hydraulic arms that open and close them, or the other ones all on the chain. That runs right the length of that thing pulling on a gear that but i mean josh what do you think yeah i'd be happy to review this with jason um there's definitely going to be a little differences between them uh jason you plan on these to be automatically shut at a certain time yeah it, it would be where they would be automatically open and shut at a certain time uh it would have wireless where we could control it from our phone if we ever need to open and shut it as well uh, it would have a keypad where some people in the city could have a code to get in if they needed to as well. I think regardless, we just have to make sure, and they most likely they come with it, some kind of light that indicates when they're shutting, some kind of pre-warning so it doesn't close on someone in either operation. But uh, I'll be happy to get with you tomorrow. We could come back at the next meeting. I so, think we, we need to work fairly quick. We had said last meeting we were going to make a decision. Yeah. Tonight. So I have the prices. It, it's going to be somewhere around the $17,000 range for two of them. And then once you add add an electrical to it, it's going to be somewhere around the range of twenty four dollars right. So if you, you had one on the front of Bear Pen. If we had and, one on the front, it would cut it in half. Okay. So it, it would make it around twelve grand. Uh, if we did just one on the front and maybe put a permanent one or one with a lock and key on Crosby Road. Right. And if during we tournament weekend, maybe open that, but otherwise it just would be closed at all times. Uh, we can do whatever you guys would want. Well, I mean, we want to. I would think that. we would keep it closed 
unless we have events out there like ball I would games think or so anything too. like that. And at that point, we have supervisors out there that can right. close it afterwards. Right. Thoughts from the board? I like the idea of the one gate on the east side. That's well, then right. we got to send. Then we were getting into sending the police out there to unlock and do undo the other one. And I, I don't know if you're gonna put gates on them. I'd rather where we can operate them both and they can open them and close them. But yeah, that's what I say. Let's. let's I, if you're gonna close them, let's put gates up and close them. Okay. Fine with me. Uh, Mayor, we got a meeting in two. I would like for Gary to be. We, 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 you know, we're getting we're, we're spending stuff that ain't in budget right now. We just did ten thousand. Now we're talking about another twenty five thousand. Right. Uh, I mean, is two weeks going to kill us? I, I would like his opinion before we go. Okay, the twenty. You got any suggestions? I think the twentieth you know, we'll be meeting at four thirty. So we'll. If y'all yeah, have all now and then, I'll get with Josh and, and we'll come up with which one we think would fit best, and at that point right. we can make a decision. Okay. Good. All right. That we will do. Okay. Anything else, Jace? That's all I have. Okay. Dominique? Yes. So I just have two items tonight. One is um, we got notification that our grant uh, to EDA, it's a $1.5 million grant that would go towards the Baxter water well expansion or improvement project. Um, so we basically are in the final stages before they tell us we've been awarded. And one part of that stage is we have to basically confirm that we're going to provide the cash commitment or the match to this grant. So it's a $300,000 match. Um, we have 200 that we've already budgeted. We've got another 100,000 that we've got to get with EDD um, that can reallocate 100,000 that they had already promised for the Baxter expansion, which that project is no longer happening at this time. So this is just right, kind of right. a preliminary approval that we're going to actually match this grant if we get it. So we have the money in the budget that we can match it? We have 200000 right now mm -hmm. to match it. And then the other 100000 we've just got to work through to get final confirmation from EDD that we can basically flip flop the 100,000 that they've already promised us to apply to this project. Okay. And we never heard anything from the board supervisors for the 100, for 100,000 from them? No, we sent the request in, did we not, Dominique? We did send the request. Um, one part of this conversation with EDD is potentially if we can we may have to talk about this in executive session. Okay. Um, All right. <laughs> All right. Before I get deep into that. But um, so this is just a uh, preliminary. We don't know if we've gotten the money yet. Right. Okay. okay. All right. So All right. we just need to, yes. Made a motion. Yeah. So moved. Paul made the motion. Second. Robert second. All in favor say aye. 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 Um, Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dominique. All right. So we got a letter from Bolivar County Community Action yesterday, and um, they're wanting to talk about potentially partnering with the city as it relates to them providing commitment letters um, to cover people's bills, um, their water bills. We have had a partnership with them in the past. I did propose some terms, and I would like um, at the next meeting for us to um, potentially put these terms in the form of an agreement with them, um, unless you guys say different, but I don't know if you got a chance to look at the letter. We just got it yesterday, so. I'd like to see the table until our next meeting, Dominique, and then we get a chance to look at it and review it. Okay, and, and Dominique and Marilyn are working on that, so. Uh, yeah, I'll, we'll I'll, I'll, I like the proposal she prepared, I think it, See. They've got a few tweaks on it, but yes, you're right. It's good help. It has the potential of collecting some money that otherwise we may not get. Right, no doubt. Yeah. Okay. We'll, what else, Dominique? And the only other thing, um, just to report that we were able to get our allocation for the CARES Act money, the 288000 we got notification today that our grant application was approved for that. So we should get that money in the next few weeks. Outstanding work on your part, Dominique. Thank you. All right, that's all I have. 
<laughs> but Dominique. Okay. Uh, Heather. Heather? Yes, sir. The only thing. Okay. I can't hear Heather. Heather, you there? Can you hear me? Yeah, uh huh. Go ahead. Okay, the only thing I have tonight is approval of employee recommendations. So moved. Maurice made the motion. I'll second that. Kurt, second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Is that all? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Robert? Here, I just got one thing I need to present to the board. Uh, due, to the, due to the recent criminal activity that we've had to occur in our, in our ward, and in Ward 6, which is conjunction in my, uh, next to my ward. I'm coming again before my colleagues and ask, uh, as it relates to this radio that I've requested for before. And uh, the criminal beha behavior has picked up tremendously. And as a former retired police officer, you know, elected official of the city of Cleveland, I'm asking that this be awarded uh, to the city as it would a user agreement holding me totally responsible so I can better serve these uh, the individuals uh, of uh, my ward. Now, uh, I've also had an opportunity to contact some of the other police chiefs and making sure that, you know, it was okay. And some of them have allowed their citizens to have radio. So I'm asking again, uh, all of us, to take this as a serious matter that we've had in and we need to try to get a hold of some of this activity in our community. And this is a, a way to start working with our local law enforcement officials. I, I, I didn't, I can't understand. I can't say. I couldn't understand. You couldn't understand what? Ms. Pobre? We're having a problem understanding, uh, Robert. It, We're getting an echo or something. I don't know. Getting an echo in there. Uh, I think what he's asking for is a uh, access to a police radio. I think it's against the law first as an alderman. You're not permitted by law to, to participate in the management of the executive branch. And if you do that, I, as an attorney for other municipalities, the attorney general can actually take steps to remove the alderman from office. Well, if, can you hear me now, Kurt? Yeah, now I can. But I, I heard what Maurice said. I, I, I didn't hear it. The first thing for you. I have, I've had an opportunity to speak with others, and this 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 is uh, not the case as far as having a radio. That that is that is not the case. I spoke to other police chiefs who've allowed that to happen. Well, my opinion as a lawyer doing municipalities thirty five years, I believe it's against the law. We we cannot as all we can do is sit as policy, hire, fire, approve, pay people and set policy. We can't become involved in any of the activities of the executive branch. It's against the law. Yeah, but you, you, you're actually not involved. So when, when you say involved, if we were handling day -to, trying to handle day-to-day -day activity, we're not doing the day-to-day -day activity. The mayor handles the day-to-day -day activity. Yeah. We have a right to mayor to go in and sit down and ask for a department head to explain something to give information, but we do not have any right to have access to the ongoing operation. And well, why don't we just get an attorney general ruling on it? I, I agree, Danny. You hear that? Yeah. Yes, sir. I, I just don't want anybody to get in trouble and get removed as an alderman. I think that would be terrible. Well, I, I totally agree. You know, but if it's something that can help with some of the activity that we're going on, and you know, in our community, we need to, you know, be about the business doing all of us, really, not just me. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm not really sure what you think you're going to do with the radio you can't do with the cell phone, but I mean, let's, let's get a ruling. I, that's the only thing I think. Let's just be sure we're covered on it. Well, Paul, you know, as a former police officer, you know, you probably, it's hard to do that with a, with a, with a, with a phone versus a radio because the fact is that I know what I'm looking at. Well, 
Yeah, yeah but that's what the okay. problem is you're a former, you're not a current officer. Well, well that's, that's no, what current it's from a lot is still the same. I mean, we're trying to resolve some, but we, we, I understand we, that. We got a problem. We have problems. I mean, I, I agree. We got them in my ward, Robert. Uh, just this week, we had a problem. And uh, I mean, if we, why don't we just get the road and if it's okay? I mean, that's just how long will that take, Danny? I get a letter off before your next meeting. I don't know how long it'll turn around. Usually not too terribly long, six weeks. Could be shorter. Okay. And I can look and see what's out there too. Uh, you know, yeah. the limitation yeah. on being able to uh, listen, but not make a call. I just don't know. Yeah, uh, then we, you know, and, and once you look it up, if it's not feasible, then we will track it from it. But I just know, you know, you, you can't continue to sit back and if you can to assist and try to work with it. And, I got it. Okay, Danny. Mayor, I, I just did, if it's appropriate, um, did we ever send Cindy Hyde Smith a letter uh, thanking her for that help in the appropriation of the pump station on Fayette Davis that you know uh, of? Yeah, I feel confident we did. I'll, I'll check and see. Okay, I just want to follow up on that. Uh, it was a great, yeah. great action on her part. Yeah, Thank you, boy. That's all. Uh, Maurice? I have nothing. Okay, Ted? Yes, uh, on uh, Thursday of last week uh, in Ward 6, we had the water to be turned off for two, over two and a half hours, and I had several calls from citizens wanting to know why the water were turned off, and I finally called uh, Keith. But uh, what I would like to see in the near future, any time that the water is going to be turned off in, in a ward, that uh, the alderman uh, be contacted because several people, you know, they, they called the alderman and asked me, you know, what's, what's happening. I know I'll pay my water bill. So I'd like to see some type of notification that will, you know, come to the alderman and let them know that the, the water will be turned off. So we won't get all the problems from people calling and asking why. Right. Keith, if you'll get with I can handle that, Ed. I can handle that. Uh, I, I'm, you know, I'll make a mental note that. From now on, I'll call the alderman, whoever the alderman is in the ward. We had a boat water main under the railroad track there. And uh, I contacted the police department, city hall, and public works, and let them know that if they got any calls, what was going on. But that's a good idea. I really hadn't crossed my mind. I, you know, the alderman needs to be notified. And I apologize. I, I really appreciate it because, you know, once you and I talk, that really lift the burden on. Uh, why, you know, so many people call, they want to know why. So I appreciate that. Absolutely. I agree. It'll, Paul. it'll be done. Paul? Huh? You got anything? Oh, no. Okay. Keep up you. I, I, I don't have anything. Uh, Kirk, if you'll take care of us. Can I say, you going to call on me? Yeah. <laughs> no, did I skip you? Yeah, you skipped Kirk. That's what I said. You got out of here. Kirk, let me get yeah. up. Let me get go up. ahead, Kirk. Let me get up and leave. No. No, go ahead, Kirk. <laughs> you got the floor. Uh, Mayor, in my ward, in my area, we have a very serious and dangerous intersection that needs four way stop sign. We put them on South Bolivar and Lamar a number of years ago. It was a two way stop. And the same thing, one block west, south of four in Lamar, needs to be made a four-way stop. We have an incredible number of children who are crossing that intersection on bikes and on foot, and it's become a danger, and the people along that street are asking for help. The, the traffic flows up Memorial Drive uh, two or four or south of four and people are going 50. I mean, and I know the police had been out there and given tickets, but it's still, I mean, it's 24 seven. It is. And oh, it's Josh. just dangerous. And I'd like whatever needs to be done. And I'll be glad to make that in the form of a motion, which I will, that we okay. proceed with. I second that motion. It's horrible over there. Okay. Oh. Kirk made a motion. Paul second. All the favor say oh. aye. Uh, What's the motion? To put about putting uh, 
Four-way stop, stop sign. Stop it, sign at that on the south of four at the intersection of Lamar. Make it a four-way stop. It's now a two-way on the Buster. Buster and Josh, if y'all will, and Ray Bell, if y'all will take care of that. We'll get it done tomorrow. Yes, sir. We get a, we thank get you, Kirk. I'm sorry I overlooked you. That's uh, okay. That's all I have, and thank you. Well, uh, no, you got to get us in executive session. I'll make a motion that we enter into executive session, and I'm going to give the reason. Uh, informant matters, litigation, uh, and any other related items. Okay, Kirk made the motion. Second. Danny second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, and I move we enter executive session for those reasons. Kirk made the motion. Danny second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. We will now nominate, go out of regular session to executive session.